again, folks. The Football Association of England, or the FA, has its own Twitter account. It even has a blue tick. And I'm not really surprised after what it posted 14 hours ago. I'm really surprised it's only got like 4,000 people following it because football is huge here in England. Anyway, the pinned tweet, the tweet you first see when you go into its account, is this. It says, welcome to the FA's Twitter account where you can find corporate and regulatory updates from the governing body of English football. And that's it. So it tells you when you come onto this Twitter site, all you're going to get is football and uh, any decisions it makes regarding football. Well, no. Uh-uh. I don't think so. It's gone political. Now, the Football Association receives £30 million in uh, UK tax money. And you would think that it would use that to help grow grassroots football, fund Wembley Stadium, which is the home of English football, and everything else football to do with England. But no, this Black Lives Matter Marxist poison has managed to even seep into the FA, it seems. Because now it's come out with this statement. Probably not to be outdone by the uh, woke Scottish football team, I think. So it posted this, and it says, A message from the FA to England supporters. Tomorrow, our England senior men's team will begin their Euro 2020 campaign at our home, Wembley Stadium. Now, give it a few months or a few years, and this kind of thing will change, because they won't want to misgender whoever's playing for their national team. And they won't be called the England senior men's team anymore. They'll be the England senior pronouns team, <laughs> or something daft like that. You know which way it's going, folks. I mean, the FA have already gone really woke with their redesign of the England football team logo by adding a lioness and a cub to reflect the true diversity of the game. <laughs> anyway, it continues. Major tournaments don't come around often, and when they do, it's an opportunity to unite friends, families and the country. This collective support is what spurs our team on during challenging moments, and it gives them the best chance of succeeding. Succeed in what exactly? They've won nothing since 1966. As the team has reiterated many times, they will collectively take the knee ahead of their fixtures during the tournament. They are doing this as a mechanism of peacefully protesting against discrimination, injustice and inequality. This is personally important to the players and the values the team collectively represents. Now I'm going to ask this question again. Where exactly do these people see discrimination, injustice and inequality? especially here in multicultural Britain. We have ethnic minority people in government in the corridors of power. We have black law lords. We have black judges. The Houses of Parliament is filled with black and ethnic people. We have black head teachers. We have black city mayors. We have black and ethnic people in the very high echelons of our police service. We have multi-millionaire black celebrities. We have multi-millionaire black and ethnic sports stars. So again, who are they kneeling to? What discrimination, injustice and inequality are they kneeling for? Anyway, this drivel goes on. This gesture of unity and fighting against inequality can be traced back to as far, what, as the 18th century? I can promise you now, folks, sportsmen and women, back in the day, back in the 80s, did not kneel or take the knee. I'm not sure if that's what this statement suggests, but uh, <laughs> yeah, oh my God. See, changing history again, this is a Marxist tactic of changing history. It is not new, <laughs> it is. And English football has made it very clear that it does not view this as being aligned to a political organisation or ideology. Black Lives Matter is a political organisation, it is now, it is in the United States. It's trying to establish being one here in the United Kingdom. It's a cancer that's spreading into politics. And it is a hateful ideology that cares not about black lives other than revenge. It is a vengeful terrorist organisation in my view. And these idiots are kneeling to it. Oh my God, I tell you what, reading this is steeply lowering my IQ. Anyway, I shall trudge on. There can be no doubt as to why the players are taking the knee and what it represents in a football context. Right, the players are doing this because they think they're being nice and good and fighting inequality and injustice. All that crap. I've done this video yesterday, but I am now more convinced than ever that these people don't know why the hell they are kneeling. They have no idea. We encourage those that oppose this action to reflect on the message you are sending to the players you are supporting. Yes, you can encourage all you want. Like you said, your players are allowed to express their 
views politically on the pitch by kneeling and the fans have the exact same right to either turn their backs or boo them. It swings both ways, a bit like racism. Please respect their wishes and remember that we should all be united in a fight to tackle discrimination together. They will do their best for you. Please do your best for them. So in other words, you have to understand why we are kneeling, but we don't have to understand while you are booing, and we will go so far as to call you racist for doing so. Right, I think this statement by the FA is a cheap shot at the fans who pay their money, and the taxpayers as well. The taxpayer funds this organisation to the tune of £30 million a year. Now, the taxpayers don't pay these idiots for lessons in Marxist ideology, which this is. Like I've proven before, Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organisation because their leaders have come out in the mainstream media, or the lamestream media, as I should call them, and they have said themselves they are trained Marxists. Black Lives Matter is a Marxist organisation. It is an organisation with sinister motives under the guise of fighting racism. When it wants nothing of the sorts other than to divide people, black, white, ethnic, whatever, it seeks division. It's not the way to go about it. And I would hope that someday in the near future that organisations would denounce Black Lives Matter for what it really is. After all, there are some black sportsmen out there here in the UK who will refuse to kneel because they've done their homework. They have read into it. They've armed themselves with knowledge and red pill themselves so they won't kneel because they know that Black Lives Matter is not for Black Lives Matter. And I will continue to do these videos as long as I have this platform as well. And in my opinion, if the Football Association are going to go down this route of trying to press a hateful and failed, warped rhetoric and ideology upon people, then it should not be funded by the taxpayers' money here in the UK and can try and fund itself in some way, which is what needs to be done to the BBC as well. Italy have just proposed a notion to ban communism from its lands, and rightly so, because it has recognised that communism, Marxism, socialism, all sides of the same dice, folks, is a horrible, destructive concept, idea that has never worked, and the people who've lived under it have suffered greatly. And this is the path, this is the fork in the road that the FA have... Um, either chosen or being forced to take. Who knows? Make your minds up on that one, folks. Anyway, that's my video. Please comment, share, subscribe, and until my next one, Roger Trout.